I've had this adapter for a while, and I've been avoiding it for fear of it being bad. The Satoshi 165W 4-port all USB-C desktop power adapter. I will be putting this adapter through its paces to find out what it can do. I'll be checking to see if it can hold up to the rated power, see if it gets too hot, and how efficient, plus in general, how good of a power supply it is. I don't have a ton of expectations, but maybe I'll be surprised. Let's crack this thing open, but first a word from the sponsor. Joking. There is no sponsor. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons. Okay, let's start with the Satoshi 165 watt USB C 4 port PDGAN charger model ST UC165GM. Upon opening the box for this one, we are greeted with another box. Prize achieved. We can all go home now. Inside that box is the power adapter, a plastic tray, if you want it to be upright, and a US figure 8 power cord. We will get into the voltage on this device later, but this may be a global travel companion. The power cord is about 4 feet long that is supplied with it. There is a user manual hiding in there too. The packaging for this one weighed 147 grams. On the heavier side, but not the worst I've seen. The power adapter weighs 414 grams with the power cord and support tray. This is heavy, but in comparison with other desktop adapters, this is actually among the lightest option. If you want to take this one adapter and replace four adapters, it's not a bad option. And it is a bit smaller than the 200 watt adapters out there. I'd say about 35 watts smaller. The power adapter doesn't look bad. It has a premium look and feel. They decided to change up the USB port options and do away with USB-A ports. This device has four USB ports, all C-type. We'll get into the capabilities in a bit. Around the back, we can see the ETL safety listing and a bunch of text describing the power outputs and current handling capability. This adapter also has a few other listing marks, which is nice to see. There is a mark missing from the adapter, no Department of Energy listing, so that is something to check on during the testing phase. The user manual tells you how to plug it in and everything, Thing, but it doesn't have the nice infographic I like to see to talk about power sharing. There is a slightly better table talking about that, but I took this from the Amazon listing is a bit more clear about how the ports share the power. The device mostly talks about how it can charge Apple devices, but I think there is much more to it than that. Okay, time to plug this thing in and see what it can do. The first thing I noticed is the idle power consumption is on the high side and a bit unstable. There isn't a lot of noise on that signal, at least. The idle power appears to be running in some kind of hiccup mode during its idle state, meaning it uses more power for a short period of time, but it isn't extreme. The idle is a little higher yet when we'd power this with 230 volts and 50 hertz. I have a caveat to this high idle power in that this is single device is high, but if you replace four adapters with this, it's actually on the better side. If we investigate the idle power from a single unit perspective for cost, it ends up around $1 for a US household and around two euro for a European household in a year. It isn't about the one though. Millions of people using that much adds up to a lot of wasted energy. The technology is available to do better than this. The adapter has an LED on the face. And what an LED. It is really bright and blue. Honestly, this is probably significantly contributing to the idle power usage. It doesn't need this. White LED, please, and very dim. Or a piece of tape. The Satoshi has the normal modes of operation for a USB power delivery device. The current specification states normal modes of 5, 9, 15, and 20 volts for fixed output voltages that your device negotiates for. This device adds in the 12 volt mode too. Always welcome. This power adapter also has an adjustable output voltage mode called Programmable Power Supply or PPS. This mode can help devices charge more efficiently and therefore faster. The Satoshi has a 20 volt mode with up to 100 watts of power and 5 amps. This means Samsung super fast charging, although Satoshi doesn't make a claim of that mentioning only Apple devices in the marketing. Let's turn the power up on this one and take a look at its performance. The first thing I see with this power adapter is it has power factor correction, and it turns on very early. No mode segregation with this one. Also, based on the power in, this one doesn't appear to be sacrificing anything to have that mode either. This is looking really good. All the way up to 100 watts and the power efficiency is still strong. The limitation of this adapter is that it can only do 100 watts on one port. It doesn't have any extended power range or EPR modes. 
The voltage levels were excellent on this power adapter, each mode held within the tolerance of the USB specification. There shouldn't be any issues powering lots of devices. This is one of the best I have seen in terms of the voltage regulation. The power negotiation is a bit better than the usual devices. It looks like it still does have to renegotiate. The terms of that renegotiation seem to happen after a second device. So if a port has to drop from 100 watts, so one port, 100 watts, second port, 60 watts, third port trips renegotiation to lower power levels for those first two ports. Overall, the power sharing is quite good and this device with four things plugged in at once is 60, 45, 30, and 30 watts. It isn't even power sharing, but that is okay. The power adapter did not have any claim of Department of Energy 6, which is a standard for power supply efficiency. It didn't meet the requirements at 120 volts and at 230 volts it won't meet the EU requirements. It does meet the less strict and older requirements for Australia and the California Energy Commission though, so should be for sale in California at least, until they finish legislation to require DOE 6 which will probably be something else by then. Here is the detailed data for this device. This is almost perfect. The idle performance is the only sore spot. I think with some minor tweaking here, Satoshi could be the first one to get a near perfect power adapter. In terms of efficiency from 10% power usage and up, this power adapter does a great job. The power is clean and efficient in nearly every mode. This moves this power adapter up in power quality score to near the top of the chart, at least in 120 volt. But what happens when I switch over to 230 volts and 50 hertz? Take a look at that. In this mode, power data still looks great. The idle did increase, but not a huge amount, and the efficiency is even better. Power factor is still strong. This is easily the best performing adapter I have seen on 50 hertz power. Achieving 94% overall efficiency is wild. Overload is testing when the device safely shuts down when too much power is drawn. This can happen from a short circuit or a misbehaving device. The power adapter tripped on overload at 110 watts. This is a safe limit. With two ports plugged in, the second port trips at 64 watts. I didn't even take out the thermal camera for this power adapter. It stayed cool during all testing. The power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The goal is to have all the waves look like the shape here, the yellow line, a sine wave. This power adapter absolutely puts other adapters to shame in this category. It is a little noisy, but it is nothing compared to the distortion of not having power factor correction. This looks good from 10 watts all the way up to the full load. Okay. Time to compare the data. I don't have anything else exactly at 165 watts, so I pulled in data from the near wattage adapters. When comparing the idle data with others, it isn't as bad as the Watobia's 200 watt, but it doesn't compare to the Anchor 747 150 watt adapter. This doesn't make the claim of DOE 6 or the EU claim, and it doesn't meet the idle requirements of either. Interestingly, this does meet the California Energy Commission requirements and the Australian efficiency requirements. On the idle graph, this is on the higher side. It isn't as bad as that Wotobius again, but it doesn't compare to the anchor. Again, even as a multi-output requirement, this doesn't meet the DOE and EU claims. When comparing the overall data with other adapters, this thing is really good. It is a top tier performer. The efficiency is very high on both 50 and 60 hertz, and the power factor correction is active a lot of the time, giving it a very strong marks in both data sets. Actually, this is the best 230 volt 50 hertz performer I've seen. On the average power consumption graph, it doesn't have anything specifically near it for exact power usage, but the power quality score makes it shine, taking it to the top among its near competitors. It is going to be very difficult to beat this adapter, and it has a safety listing to boot. Okay, well there it is, the Satoshi 165 watt power adapter. I think this will become my new daily driver, replacing my Bassius 100 watt adapter. This adapter, although it is a little high on the idle power usage, is in all other modes, great. The efficiency is also a chart topper, so if you leave a laptop plugged in or any other USB device, the idle falls away and this adapter wins. In terms of cost, this adapter is around 120 US dollars. This is expensive, but for a top tier performance, you're getting what you're paying for here. This is unlike what we've seen from a lot of the competition. The form factor isn't outrageous, so it isn't out of the line to use this as a multifunction travel adapter. With the interchangeable power cord and the universal input voltage, this reaches the world. The bright LED can be solved with a bit of tape. 
The idle power is bad and hopefully Satoshi can solve this on future products. If you unplug this adapter when not in use though, you won't be paying for any of that. Mine is on a switched outlet so I can simply turn it off. Let me know what you think down in the comments and I'm sure we'll see more of this one as it is now my new high power recommendation. It probably won't stand the test of time for long though. Satoshi has something else coming. Okay, time to apply the sticker. This is tested and on the database, so you can take a look at how it stacks up, sort of. The 50 and 60 hertz data are fighting each other for the top spot. Thanks for watching. Next week, I'll have some options for what the video will be about. Here are some of them, or it could be a power bank. I do have the Satoshi 200 watt on pre-order, and if that is anything like this, that may be the new best device. Check my website for upcoming videos, and there's a schedule of release dates. I have many more of these power adapters to get through and many more videos in the future. Goodbye.